Hi, I'm Daniel Brunson of Hicks Brunson Eyewear. I'm here at the store today with Tom Cody. And Tom's the founder and designer of Zero G Eyewear. We're gonna talk a little bit to Tom about some of the things that make Zero G so special. So Tom, I, I've carried the collection in the store for over four years now, and I've just come to view it as one of the most well-built, one of the most reliable collections in eyewear today. Talk a little bit about what goes into the making of a Zero G frame. Well, actually, uh, I always wanted to be an architect, and I've always been fascinated with design. And, and um, after graduating from Pepperdine University in Malibu, I got into eyewear sales. And when I was working with opticians, they were always saying, why not this, why not that? And after getting the experience from working with the companies, I found I wanted to build a better mousetrap. And I was doing consulting for Masanaga Optical in Japan, and they're based out of Fukui. And they're a 110 year old company. They've been around for a long time. And I knew I needed to work with them because uh, they're considered the best of the best. And when I was doing consulting for them, I was trying to make their product a little bit more Americanized. And uh, I did so well with what they were doing in the U.S. that I presented them a concept with the Zero G, which, uh, you know, it's, it's all cut out of one single sheet of titanium. There's no screws, there's no solder points, and I felt like there was a void in the marketplace. And uh, everything was kind of heavy, uncomfortable, and the concept came from, it's really a normal door hinge that you would see in every household. But I wanted to, the calibration of the Japanese engineering was so precise and so pristine that I knew that it would work. The okay. hinge is one of the most, in my view, one of the brilliant components to the Zero G collection. Um, without a screw, uh, it just, it flows. It's such a smooth hinge, but, but yet it's such a durable hinge as well. I want to give you a concept of how it comes apart so you can get a better feel for it. So I designed this jig to be, it's like a push pin essentially. And all you do is push it out. And when I designed it, I designed it so the pin stays in the last rung. And there's a little head on the top and bottom. And those two heads prevent it from rotating or falling through, slipping through. And the quality of the titanium we use, it doesn't wear over time. So that's why we can guarantee, the hinge is guaranteed for life, that the pin will not fall out. Talk a little bit about okay. maybe where the collection's going yeah. from a style uh, standpoint. So when I started to design like, a frame like yours, like the King's Point, if, uh, if I may, can I borrow yours? Yeah, of course. You know, it's actually a thin facade of acetate, and it gives you that bold look of the 50s and, the, you know, that whole heavy look. But what happens is when you're wearing a frame for a couple of hours, you'll get, you know, nose pressure where you feel like you're getting a headache or pressure here. But the flexibility with the titanium in the hinge, also with the thin facade of the heavy acetate, uh, it actually feels like you're, not, you're wearing a, a rimless frame. And it's interesting to see you brought some some pieces here, some, some plate pieces of acetate before they're cut that went into one of my favorite frames in the collection, which is your limited edition piece, Empire State. Yeah, it's amazing when someone sees a frame for the first time, it, you know, you don't really know how much work goes into it. There's over 200 steps in making a frame. The process is all handmade, and this is actually the original form of the acetate, and it's very rigid and stiff, and it doesn't seem like it would be very comfortable wearing it on the face. But the way it's tailored down, it's, it's actually tumbled after it's cut and then it's tumbled for three days and polished, and they put a little thin groove on this edge here. And I try to go for a modern retro with the, the King's Point, and this kind of taking old timeless shapes from the past and bring them into the future, but with a new design. And I designed this flip bridge where you push down and it hooks, and you can open it up, and that's how you take the eye wire and the lens out. But this is all done with no screws, no solder points, and the advantage of that is actually when there's a solder point or there's a weld, that's usually where a frame breaks or comes out of adjustments. Well, that's one of the things that I thought was very interesting about the Empire State is it's got this really awesome looking metal finish, but almost looks like a leather weave. It's the first eyewear that actually flat sheet metal that has 3D printing inlaid into the frame. So when we initially came up with the prototypes, they wore the leather. And we felt the leather over time when you're washing it, wearing it, and over natural wear and tear, it would peel or fray. So we wanted something innovative and unique and different to kind of, because this is a limited edition piece. These are, I'm only making 50 of this in particular color for the world. So we actually make this three day inlay and it's pressed from the inside and then it's inlaid and with an epoxy so it won't peel, it won't tarnish and when you flex it, it won't fall off at all. The marking on the outside of all the zero G temples are the four squares. I mean, yes. What's the meaning of yeah. the four squares or the significance of that? The person that wants to wear a zero G is a you know, conservative business professional and want to be hip and cool without being too edgy and without being too conservative because I wanted people to know that when you're wearing a frame you can identify that it's a zero G without saying zero G all over the side. Well thanks so much Tom for coming to Hicks Brunson Eyewear today to talk to us about the collection. Uh, it's, it's an awesome collection to work with and I just appreciate everything that you do to make it such a special collection. 
I really appreciate it, Daniel. I actually, uh, you know, every account that I go to, I always brag about Hicks Brunson in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and everyone thinks that, you know, my biggest accounts are in LA, San Francisco, New York, and I say, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Hicks Brunson is fourth generation, and, uh, you know, for me, I always take tribute to the past and, like, making a modern retro design, and I always think about where your great-grandfather was and, like, what he did and how he started in the industry, and now we're continuing the legacy, and it, it really is an honor to be working with you, and I appreciate you for your support, and I can't believe that my number one account in the country is in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so I appreciate that, and thank you so much. Thank you so much.